Discoverability and analytics. People have been asking about this. How do I do SEO? How do I find out what my users are doing? Because it's a web page. You want to be able to do these things. So the short, short answer is you're using progressive enhancement. So you're still building a site that everybody can see. And the PWA features are a layer on top of that for capable browsers. So all the rules and SEO rules of building a good site still apply. Now, JavaScript sites, you probably knew this already, but our crawler actually does index JavaScript sites and executes and watches things. So there is a new set of best practices that you can get to in the slide deck or from the textbook. This was a post on Google Plus that's been put up, and you can read those. And it's got very specific things that you need to be doing to make sure that your site picks up in the crawler. But you can also go to the Google Webmaster Tools and use the Fetch as Google tool, which will pull your page and show you what Google actually sees. That's important, because you know, how we render, if things may be missing or different, you actually want a good look at what we're doing. So that's the first rule. You're still building a website. It still uses JavaScript. You, just, you need to follow the same rules as everyone else um, so that you get into the database properly. <coughs> Now, what's analytics? Kind of the obvious thing here. So as the user does things, it generates data. That goes to the analytics back end, and then we generate reports. OK, kind of obvious, but need to define our terms. So when you build, how many people are using analytics already? See, most of the room. Not quite everybody. So let me do a quick review for the folks who don't. What you do is you go into Google Analytics, create an account, which is free. And each account has multiple properties. Now, I don't mean JavaScript properties. You know, multiple locations that it tracks. So each property is one location. For each property, you'll get a piece of JavaScript code called a tracking snippet that has an embedded property number in it. And then optionally, you can do some custom analytics beyond the default that we give you. So an example, you might have one account and if you had iOS, Android, and web apps, they would each have unique property ideas, but you would track them under one account. <coughs> this is what the snippet looks like. There's a bunch of uglified JS above this. But at the bottom, that creates a function called GA, Google Analytics. And the analytics function you call create and give it your tracking number. So this will be some number that you've been given. That creates a connection. And then you start sending it events. So in this case, you're going to send it page view events for each page the user looks at. But you don't have to be limited to page view events. So a typical example of the analytics dashboard. And we can infer from subsequent page views how long somebody spends on each page, except the very last page. Hard to infer that one. <coughs> so we also have real-time analytics. So we will report to you the cycle time on this is about once a minute. We'll actually report to you what events have been happening live. It's kind of fun to watch, especially on a rollout. And it could be good for some diagnostics. So if you want custom events, <coughs> you send a new event. You set the hit type to event. And then these next three fields, event category, action, and label, are completely up to you. These are the three axes on which you can sort things in the reports. Alternatively, you can call GA send an event and just line those three fields up, and it'll work too. This top version's a little bit more readable. OK, pretty, you know, pretty obvious, pretty simple. So if somebody was asking, for example, can I track add to home screen? So if I actually have the user initiate an add to home screen event and I write to the manifest to kick it off with the system, then I could actually send at the same time the fact that they did that add to home screen. So that could construct that particular event. If you send push notifications, when the client receives the push, first when the drop down notify shows up, you could record that event. When they react to it, you could record that. So you can record any user action they take and set it off as an event. So here's the example in push, push uh, notifications. We subscribe to the push manager. And then whenever we get the subscription, we go ahead and send a note that says, OK, this user registered for push messages. Now, there's a bit of a problem when you do this with service workers. 
the GA library requires the use of window. So instead, you ditch the library if you don't have window, which you don't have instead of a worker, and instead send the appropriate HTTP formatted messages. And that's documented as the measurement protocol API. There's a, a doc page at Google, but let me show you some examples. <coughs> So I'm going to listen for somebody who gets a notification and closes it and post a analytics event for that. So on close, of course, do the wait until to keep things alive. Do a fetch on the Google Analytics endpoint. It's googleanalytics.com collect. Post version one message. Um, leave the CID alone. Set your tracking ID to whatever your ID is. Define your event, you know, and add your various values afterwards. Now, what about if you're offline? The idea if you're offline is basically to take those events and instead of sending them to the server, because you can't, build the URLs and store them in the database. And then when you're back online, read the database, play back all the URLs. Now, you could write this code, but you don't have to. Um, as usual, we have an open source library called offline Google S called SW offline Google Analytics service worker offline Google Analytics that you basically go get it from NPM it's on github import the script initialize it and use it to send your messages so just pass the messages to it um, if it can reach the server it will and if it can't it'll store them in index DB you can see the data, the store here, offline Google, Google Analytics with a store of URLs. They're all stored up there. When it goes back online, it'll read and play them back. Now, there are limits in Google Analytics to how many URLs you can send in a batch. It's, if I remember correctly, it's like the last 256 events. So this basically does a, um, the correct queuing for that. What happens if you run out of storage? I don't know what the error handling does on this one. You could look at the docs and see what it says. I suspect what will happen is it will just fail to store that event. So this will capture the events offline. Remember this is, so if the service worker is tracking the page views, yes. But this doesn't hook the top level handler. So you'd have to pass that data down. What I would do at that point is actually, if I'm serving my pages from the service worker, I'm probably sending a synthetic page view event of my own inside the app. Normally inside of an SPA, you don't get the same kind of page view event, but you can generate your own synthetic one, your own custom one, every time you render a new page, and that's what I would do. <coughs> so the lab uh, is to set up an analytics and Firebase account, add analytics, create some custom events, so you can experiment with custom page views. Uh, try it with service workers and push notifications. We got a little sample for you using the measurement protocol API and do offline analytics. So practicing all the things we just talked about.